we have got two chords then that intersect in the circle, inside the circle, right? Um, so who can name one of the chords here? AC is one of the chords, and another one is DE. Now, when those two chords intersect, then each one of them is cut into segments. So if you take chord AC, what two segments is it divided into? A, B, and B, C, and this one is divided into E, B, and B, D. Now, if you look at those segments, the products of the measures of the segments of the chords are equal. What do we mean by that? What we mean is, if you take chord A, B, um, A, C, that is split into A, B, and B, C. And if you multiply A, B times B, C, that's the same as E, B times B, D. Okay? So if I write it in a more simpler fashion, suppose this is W, and this is X, and this is Y, and this is Z, then W times X is equal to what? Y times Z. Well, these are triangles, and they are actually proportional, right? Because W over X, right? W over X is Y over Z, and it's the same proportion. Yeah. Any two chords intersecting in the same in the circle works for this. Okay. Yeah. No. So um, in this case, right, you take one of the chords A B and the two segments are X times six equal to three times four. That means 6x is equal to 12, and x is equal to 2. It's literally just as simple as that, okay? Now, if you take this one, then we have x times x plus 12 is equal to x plus 2 times what? x plus 6, okay? We distribute and we FOIL and we get x squared plus 12x is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 12. Well, when you subtract an x squared from both sides, those go away. So then you have that 4x is equal to 12 and x is equal to 3. Okay? Now we can apply this to a real life scenario because you may not know this but the shape of a rainbow is actually a complete circle so if you see a rainbow that's actually part of an entire circle and the circle sort of um, extends into the surface of the earth and then like you could imagine it comes back like this okay now um, we can't see the whole thing because it extends into the horizon, but we see the arc that you could see here. I'll take you in a minute, okay? Now, what we need to do in this case is we need to find the radius of the circle containing the arc of the rainbow. So here is the rainbow, and what we know is from here to here is 5 miles, and this part just above the horizon is 0.7 miles, okay? And you can measure that with any instrument, just like sculptors use. It's all proportions, okay? So basically, this is part of a circle, right? That means we draw the circle. And this is just the part that extends above the horizon, and then the rest of it goes inside the surface of the Earth. So the complete circle looks like that. And what you see here is just that upper part, okay? And if this distance in the center is that distance in the center, if you extend that line, then that becomes a what of the circle? A diameter of the circle okay now yeah okay so if this entire thing is five miles then how much is each part here 2.5 
and 2.5. And we know that this is 0.7 because it tells us that it's 0.7. And I'm going to call this part x. Okay? So why don't we first find x? What do we do to find x? It's 0.7 times what? x. That's equal to what? 2.5 times 2.5. That means 0.7x is 6.25, so x is 8.93. Okay? Right. So, are we okay? Maya, you're okay? No. Hang on. Yes? No. Right. So the entire diameter is this. This is the entire diameter. So we say diameter is 0.7 plus 8.93, which is equal to 9.63. So the radius is half of 9.63, 4.815 miles. Okay? 8.93. Sixty-three. Okay. All right. So this was the case when two chords intersect inside a circle. All right. Next, let's take an example when uh, two secants intersect. Okay. Before we get to what happens to the intersection, let's talk about some uh, terminology. All right, so here we have two secants that intersect outside of the circle, right? And you can see the secants in all their glory, right? None of them have been cut off. You see two distinct lines. Um, a secant, remember, crosses the circle because it has to touch the circle at two points. All right, now, um, we're going to define a few terms here. First, the part from here, the intersection to the intersection of the circle, this is going to be called the secant, right? Because we really don't need anything to the left of A and anything to the right of C. So we're going to call that the secant. This part that's outside, we're going to call that the external secant segment. Do you see what I mean? So the secant is the whole thing, and the part that's outside is the external secant segment. And you can see here, AC, the whole thing, and AE, the whole thing, are the secant segments. Okay, so here we have, if two secant segments, right, are drawn to a circle from an exterior point, then we got to take a product. It's the product of, one secant segment and its internal secant, that's equal to the other secant segment and its internal secant. What do I mean by that? You have a secant here, AC. You take the entire secant, AC, times what's the external part? AB is equal to the counterparts of the other one. What's the entire segment of the bottom one? AE times AD. Okay? And um, if you write it in words, then it's the secant times the external equal to other secant and its external. Yeah. Yes, the entire thing times the outside part of the same secant, right? It's the other secant and its external. So it's the secant and its external and so on, okay? Yeah. No, no, no. AC times AB, the entire secant times its external part. Okay. Moving on to this one, so we need the entire secant and the external part. 
Yes, the entire secant. So it's the entire secant. This is the entire secant. And the red is the external part. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at this one. If you look at AD, right? AD, that's the entire secant. How big is AD? 5 plus X. Resist the temptation of saying that it's 5X because this is the most common, common, common mistake that I see. And it's very sad because I know you know the answer, but I still see the mistake. And for me, it's very, very sad. All right, so how big is this entire secant? 12. All right, so it's going to be 5 plus X times the X. Okay, first impressions always stick. So let me let me do the fi first impression. Okay, five plus x times the external part five is equal to the entire secant twelve times seven point five. That's its external part. Okay, so the internal part alone never factors into the equation. All right, so here we get twenty five plus five x is equal to 90, 5x is 65, and x is 13. 12 times 7.5 is 90. 7 times 12? What's 7 times 12? 84. And what's half of 12? 6. Together that makes 90. Huh? Now we have a tangent and a secant, right? So what we did previously when we had two secants was we would take the entire secant times the external part. Well, now we have the secant, which we can do that for. But if JK is a tangent, then we don't have the same thing. So what are we going to multiply JK by? Well, we multiply by itself. Okay? We just multiply it by itself. So now this is the case when you have a tangent and a secant. Well, the secant you already know. It's the whole thing times the external. And in the case of the tangent, it's just it multiplied by itself. Okay? So it's going to be JK squared is equal to JM times what? JM times JL. Okay? So the way it is, is it's tangent squared equal to secant times the external part. Okay? Remember, it has to be its external. Okay? They're very possessive. All right, so in this case, we have a tangent, so we're going to multiply that by itself. Now, how big is the entire secant here? 2x plus 2, good. All right, so um, we're going to multiply 4 by itself, so it's going to be 4 squared is equal to 2x plus 2 times what? x. So we get that 16 is equal to 2x squared plus 2x. Now at this point, this is an equation. We can multiply the whole thing by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. Huh? Oh, divide. So 8 is equal to x squared plus x, which means x squared plus x minus 8 is equal to 0. Okay? We can't factor this, so we have to use the quadratic formula. What's A in this case? 1. What's B? What's C? Negative 8. So X is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 8, all over 2. So X is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 32 
that's 33 over 2. Now we're not going to plug this into our calculator. 33. Where? We're not going to plug this into the calculator, okay? Now, we know that x is this part, that's x, so we know that x has to be a positive value. Now here what we have is negative 1, and we have two choices here. Negative 1 plus root 33 over 2, negative 1 minus root 33 over 2. Now if you have a negative number and subtract another number from it, what's the result, positive or negative? Negative. So we don't want the one that's being subtracted. That means our x is negative 1 plus root 33 over 2. That's the answer. Leave it as that. On the test or on the homework, um, if it says to round it, then you round it. I know you can plug it into the calculator, um, but it's important for me to be able to figure out the answer without your calculator as well. Okay? All right. So if we go on to the next one, how big is this secant? 2x plus 4, and we're going to multiply that by what? Times x, and that's going to equal what? 10 squared or 100. So we get 2x squared plus 4x is equal to 100. I can divide by 2 again, and I get x squared plus 2x equals 50. So I bring it to the other side, set it equal to 0, and I get another equation that can't be factored. Now, there is a 1 in front of the x squared, so my a is equal to 1, b is 2, and c is negative 50. The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let me finish this poem and I'll take your question. Negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 50 all over 2. 2a. It's over 2 times a, but a is 1. The formula is b squared minus 4ac. b squared, which is 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. Did I make up the quadratic formula? I wish I had come up with it. No. The one in front of the x squared is a. The one in front of the x is b. And the coefficient is c. Okay, Liam, you and I will get together for this one. Yes, quickly, please. Okay. Okay, so x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of um, 204. Now, x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus... Now, 204 is 4 times 51. That means 4 will come out of the root, so it'll be 2 root 51 over 2. Now look at what you have. If you have all three coefficients, right, that are able to be, divi that are divisible by the same number, then you must simplify. So what can we divide all these numbers by? By 2, and you have to do that. That means... Your answer is x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 51. Okay? Now, again, you have a minus, a negative number, minus another number, that makes it negative. But since x is a value um, which, need to be, which needs to be positive, we're going to take the positive version. All right, one sec. This homework is going to be due tomorrow, which is Wednesday. The practice test, which I'm going to...
give you right now and is on haiku is also due tomorrow. Okay? I want you guys to do it at home. 